On the 31st of October, more than 3 million Queenslanders will be given a chance to choose who represents them in Parliament. Representation isn't based on shared immutable identity traits, but on shared ideas and objectives. The ideal government for a community will strike a careful balance between what's popular and what's right. Many ideas in history were popular at the time, but with perspective can now be seen to be unjust and even tyrannical. However, a system by which a minority imposed their will on the majority is still simply a different type of tyranny. Ultimately, any form of government will only be as virtuous as the people who wield the power whether that's an absolute monarchy with one person at the top, or a populist democracy. The finer details of electoral systems vary state to state and at the federal level as well. Many people have questions about how voting works, how preferences work, and even what system is in place where they vote. While most states and the Australian Commonwealth have bicameral parliaments, Queensland has a unicameral parliament, which means there's only one chamber, or house, where legislation is considered and enacted. While the lack of checks and balances can be a bad thing with politicians who may be tempted to abuse unlimited power for four years, it does make the voting system a lot simpler. Here's how to make your vote count in the Queensland state election. The state of Queensland begins early voting on Monday the 19th of October and ends at 6pm the night before election day. Queensland has a compulsory preferential voting system. This means you have to indicate in which order you would prefer the nominated candidates for your electorate to be your representative. You must number every box and may not partially complete the numbering or your vote will be wasted. If you make a mistake, simply ask the booth workers for a new ballot paper and start again. When voting closes at 6pm on Saturday the 31st of October, counting will begin. The first step is for the Electoral Commission Queensland staff, under the supervision of scrutineers nominated by various candidates, to put the ballots in stacks according to the primary preference indicated. Every ballot with a 1 beside the first candidate will go in one stack, Every ballot with a one beside the second candidate will go in another stack, and so on, until all the primary votes have been counted. Across the electorate, the counts from each booth are added up. If at this point, or any point in counting, a candidate receives more than 50% of the total vote, further counting stops, and that person is declared the winner. If no one wins the primary vote outright, the candidate with the lowest number of primary votes is eliminated. Every ballot in their pile is then reallocated according to who was clearly indicated as each voter's next preference. Now this is a brilliant feature of preferential voting because it means those voters can still have a voice in who will be their next best representative. Sure, it's not their first preference, but they're not necessarily going to be left out of the decision between the final two most popular candidates. The problem with the first-past-the-post system, where no preferences are counted, is that the person who simply receives the most primary votes may be the least representative. Imagine there are three candidates, and their policies are illustrated by vehicles. The Toyota candidate is family-friendly. The Ford candidate is family friendly, but the Harley Davidson candidate has absolutely no policies which represent the needs of families. Now, if 60% of the voters split their collective vote between family friendly candidates, the candidate with 40% would win the election, and Harley Davidson policies would be imposed on the 60% who were primarily concerned about family friendly policies. Preferential voting solves this problem. Voters who wanted Toyota policies would put the Harley-Davidson candidate last, and so would Ford supporters. The most popular family-friendly candidate would get the second preference votes of the slightly less popular family-friendly candidate, and a family-friendly candidate would easily win the election with 60% primary and preference votes over the Harley-Davidson candidate's 40%. With four or more candidates, there are simply more rounds of counting and eliminating the least popular candidate each time 
until one candidate gets more than 50% of the primary and preference votes. With this system, voters aren't necessarily endorsing who they think is perfect, but could just as easily be indicating who they think would be the worst and putting them last, and then working backwards to the least terrible option. In the Queensland 2020 state election, voters must number every box or their vote will be wasted. I've heard many say, but what about preference deals between the parties, often made between each other? Isn't that cheating? Well, no, it's not, because those parties don't hold your pen or pencil when you're marking your ballot. Only you own your vote. Those deals are never anything more than agreements on how parties will recommend their blindly loyal supporters number their preferences. Failure to think independently is still a voter's valid legal right. So if there's anything wrong with the system, the solution is to simply stop forcing people to vote who can't be bothered thinking for themselves. Compulsory freedom may be well intended, but it's got obvious loopholes. Forcing people to vote still doesn't force them to think for themselves. It does give big budget party campaigns funded by developers or unions and corporate media giants with bottomless pockets the opportunity to emotionally manipulate incurious voters who can't be bothered doing their own research on the issues and policies and actually talking to candidates. It also achieves absolutely nothing to deliberately waste your vote or write silly little political messages on your ballot. I promise you, nobody cares. You're not making your voice heard. Only when a party sees your vote actually going to someone other than them does your electoral adventure count for anything. If you really want to rub it in, go ahead and donate or volunteer to the biggest threat to the person you think is worse than all the others. I strongly recommend voters directly contact each of the candidates in their electorate well before voting day and ask them about their voting intentions if elected to parliament on the issues you think are most important to your family, your community and more than 5 million Queenslanders who will be permanently affected by your vote. Lives are literally at stake in this election, like most. So that is too big a responsibility to put less effort into than choosing a second-hand car. Tell me in the comments if you agree or disagree and how you would make the Queensland voting system better. If this video has helped you understand how preferential voting works, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. In fact, subscribe even if you hated it so you can rage on the next one. For some reason, you'll also need to click the bell icon to get notifications of new videos. My name is Dave Pello, and for the record, I have no party memberships. I don't care who wins, as long as they promote justice, liberty and peace if elected. I believe better educated voters results in better government. I'm the editor of the new media website, goodsource.news. The Good Source is fighting fake news by publishing commentary and editorials which are clearly marked opinion and publishing the writer's bio beneath each article so you can weigh where they're coming from along with the arguments and references they offer. We might sometimes disagree with each other or even you, and that's okay. We'll do so with sincerity and civility and you'll get to reach your own informed conclusions. What must not be compromised is good public policy or truth. You can sign up to receive emails and find daily articles, podcasts and videos including our election night results coverage at goodsource.news.